Palau is one of the most captivating and unique archipelagos on Earth. It is a country made up of about 340 islands in the Western Pacific, with only 18,000 inhabitants and a year-round tropical climate, with an average temperature of 28 degrees Celsius, 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit. A paradise of turquoise waters, it is one of the best places in the world for diving and observing various species of marine animals. It is one of the most isolated countries and one of the least visited in the world, but it is precisely this isolation, coupled with the beauty of the islands and waters, that makes it a country many would like to explore. As you will see, it is not just the geography and paradise-like appearance that makes this archipelago unique, but also how they have treated their animals and how aware they are of the natural treasure they inhabit. Stay with me to learn more about Palau, its history, geography, what life is like in the country, what the people are like, and much more. Number 1. Palau Officially, the Republic of Palau is the fourth least populated country in the world after Vatican City, Tuvalu, and Nauru. It has maintained a small population due to its remote location and limited land area, but this has also helped preserve its rich cultural traditions and natural resources. Its most populated islands are Anguar, Babeldog, Kara, and Peleliu, and its capital is Geromud, located on Babeldog. It is one of the smallest and least populated capitals in the world, with about 200 inhabitants. Here stands the Palau National Capital, a neoclassical building that contrasts with the country's tropical islands and waters. It may seem that all of Palau consists of small paradise-like islands, and while this is partially true, it also has a large island, Babel Dao, which makes up 70% of the country's area, covering 128 square miles and housing 30% of the population. The most populated city is Kara, located on the island of the same name, which is the economic center, where half the population resides. Number 2. Its isolated geographic location, about 500 miles east of the Philippines and 620 miles southwest of Guam, north of Australia, and the island of Papua, makes it difficult to reach the country. Only a few airlines offer flights to its main airport, Roman Matuchul International Airport, located on the island of Babel Dao. As an advantage, most nationalities receive a visa upon arrival, but getting there is expensive due to the limited number of flights. Number 3. It is the sixth youngest country on the planet, having gained independence in 1994. The first settlers arrived on the island around 2000 or 3000 BC from the Philippines or Indonesia. In the 16th century, they were spotted by Spanish explorers, and in the 18th century, Spanish Jesuit missionaries made several expedition attempts that ended in shipwrecks or accidents with loss of life. The continuous failures in reaching the islands led to Palau's original name being Enchanted Islands. After other attempts, the archipelago became part of the Spanish East Indies in 1885. Shortly afterward, in 1898, following the Spanish-American War, it was sold to Imperial Germany, passed to Japan with the defeat of Germany in World War I, and then to the United States after World War II, until its independence. Today, Palau is a presidential republic with Palauan and English as its official languages. However, there is a generational divide among Palauans. The youth, who were raised under American influence, speak fluent English, whereas the generation that grew up during the Japanese occupation speaks Japanese proficiently. Although the political system in Palau has evolved over time, incorporating aspects of Western-style democracy, such as the establishment of a constitution in 1981 and the election of a president, the traditional buy system still plays a significant role in the governance of the nation. The blending of ancient customs with modern political practices has allowed Palau to maintain a stable and enduring democratic tradition.
Number 4. There are only 13 known jellyfish lakes in the world, located in Palau, Vietnam, and Indonesia. These are lakes with no outlet to the sea, filled with vast populations of jellyfish. Jellyfish Lake, known locally as Ongemol Katal, is the only one that can be visited in Palau with millions of golden jellyfish, Mastagias papau et pisoni, and moon jellyfish, Aurelia arita. These jellyfish have lost much of their stinging ability over generations due to the absence of natural predators, allowing visitors to swim among them without fear of being stung. Furthermore, this isolated environment has led the jellyfish to develop unique characteristics and specific adaptations over time. The golden jellyfish that inhabit here have a symbiotic relationship with algae living in their tissues, called zooxanthellae, which perform photosynthesis and provide nutrients to the jellyfish in exchange for a safe place to live. During the day, the jellyfish migrate through the lake, following the sunlight to maximize the algae's exposure to light, which allows them to efficiently perform photosynthesis. Number 5. The dugong, similar to the manatee, is one of the animal species that can be found in Palau and in this part of the planet. Its population in Palau is the most isolated in the world. Although the dugong is protected by law in the country, natural mortality and illegal hunting make the species vulnerable. This animal may have been the inspiration for ancient sailors' tales of mermaids. It is an elusive creature, not easy to study or observe as they usually inhabit areas far from the shore, are solitary, and dive deep. Number 6. In 2009, Palau established the world's first shark sanctuary, an important decision for the conservation of these animals. As it inspired the Maldives, Honduras, and the Bahamas to adopt similar measures, Palau's shark sanctuary covers over 600,000 square kilometers of ocean. Here, all commercial shark fishing and trade in shark products are prohibited. Sharks play a crucial role in maintaining the health of marine ecosystems. As predators, they help regulate populations of other species and maintain balance in the food chain. Palau recognized that sharks have high value for its tourism industry, particularly for diving and snorkeling. In fact, Live sharks can generate more revenue through tourism than dead ones through fishing. This attitude is similar to what occurs in other countries, where it was realized that whale watching generates more revenue than whale fishing. In addition to the shark sanctuary, there is the National Marine Sanctuary, which occupies 80% of Palau's waters and prohibits any form of extractive activity including fishing for any species. In the remaining 20%, local people can fish, but not for sharks. Number 7. The protection of its waters is also evident in the Palauan tradition of bull, which involves temporarily closing fishing areas to allow marine life to recover. Number 8. The rock islands of Palau also known as the Chobakcheb Islands, are a group of around 250 to 300 limestone and coral islands with a spectacular landscape of mushroom-shaped rocks covered in vegetation. It is an area with coral reefs, pristine waters, turtles, fish, and sharks. Number 9. Ngeru Kowid is one of the most fascinating places in the country, located south of the Chobakcheb Islands. It consists of a set of uninhabited coral islands, a protected area that is not accessible, inhabited by birds such as the Micronesian megapod, flying foxes, and various species of reptiles. Number 10. The Milky Way Lagoon is one of the numerous lagoons and bays that make up the Palau Archipelago, specifically in the area known as the Rock Islands. It has clear and shallow waters, with a bottom of white clay valued for its natural properties for skin care, as it is believed to exfoliate and moisturize. Visitors to this lagoon often apply this clay to their face and body as a natural spa treatment. 
Number 11. Palau played a significant role during World War II as a strategic location for Japanese and American forces. As a result, the islands have numerous remnants of the war, sunken ships, planes, and abandoned military equipment. The most famous dive sites are the Iromaru, a Japanese oil tanker sunk by American forces in 1944, and the Teshiomaru, a Japanese cargo ship sunk the same year. Also, an American bomber and a fighter plane. Peleliu Island was the site of the Battle of Peleliu in 1944, one of the bloodiest and most intense battles of the Pacific Campaign. Today, remnants can be found including abandoned tanks, pieces of artillery, and other military equipment. There are also Japanese fortifications, bunkers, tunnels, and gun emplacements in the country, particularly on Babeldaob and Peleliu. Number 12. One of the most emblematic inhabitants of Palau's marine life is the giant clam, the world's largest living bivalve mollusk, which can be found in the warm and shallow waters of the Indo-Pacific region. This species can grow up to 1.2 meters in length and weigh up to 200 kilograms. They have a unique and colorful appearance due to their mantle, which is a fleshy tissue extending from the shell. They can live for over 100 years, making them one of the longest-lived marine creatures. Number 13. One of the animals that inhabits the forests of Palau is the flying fox, or fruit bat, of the species Pederopus peloensis. Historically, the people of Palau have consumed it in their traditional diet, although over time it has become more of a delicacy. They are usually boiled and eaten in a soup with coconut milk, vegetables, and ginger. Number 14. One of the best diving spots in the world is in Palau, the Blue Corner, where you can observe large schools of tuna, sharks, sea turtles, barracudas, or eagle rays. Number 15. The German Channel is another notable diving site named after the German colonization period in the 20th century, when the Germans built a channel to facilitate the transport of guano between the islands. Today, it is a meeting place for manta rays and sharks, especially during incoming tides. Number 16. The migration of manta rays is an awe-inspiring event that takes place annually in the waters of Palau. Manta rays travel in large groups in search of food and for mating, taking advantage of the favorable conditions and abundance of plankton in the area. Number 17. Ungardmau Waterfall is the largest in the country, located in a dense jungle on the island of Babeldaub, with water from the Ungardmau River plunging from a height of about 30 meters. Number 18. If you plan to go to Palau, upon entering the country, you must sign a pledge in your passport that commits you to act in an environmentally and culturally responsible way. This is a government initiative to protect culture and the environment, and the pledge was written by Palauan children. A text is stamped in the passport, and there is a rectangle at the bottom, where you must sign. Number 19. Palau is one of the most obese countries in the world, a distinction it curiously shares with another country in the area, Nauru, and with the Cook Islands. This is the main health issue of the Palauan population. 62% of adult women and 56% of adult men are obese. The reason is the same as in other countries. Lifestyle with a diet lacking local foods and excessive sedentary habits. Number 20. One of the most exotic places in Palau for some of the best beach is Long Beach, a deserted island with sandbanks, palm trees, and crystal clear waters where there is a sandbar that appears when the tide is low and is hidden when it rises, allowing passage between two islets. Number 21. Palau does not have its own military. It relies on the United States for its defense under the Compact of Free Association, an agreement signed in 1982 that allows Palau to maintain its independence and self-government while receiving economic, infrastructure, and defense assistance from the United States. 
In exchange, the United States has access to Palau's territorial waters and airspace for strategic and military purposes. Additionally, the agreement allows Palauan citizens to work in the United States and enter without a visa. Each year, the U.S. military carries out Operation Christmas Drop, where they airdrop food, educational materials, toys, and other supplies to islanders in Micronesia, including Palau. Number 22. Modern Palau is culturally influenced by the United States, but still maintains traditions and customs typical of the region and specific to the country. Palauans are the majority ethnic group on the islands. Society, like other Pacific islands, is matrilineal. Women are considered central figures in the family and influence economic decisions, acting as resource managers and community leaders. Lineage and inheritance are traced through the female line. Men, on the other hand, engage in manual labor, fishing, and agriculture. Number 23. The traditional village in Palau is organized around a bai, a large meeting house open on the sides and built on stilts. This building serves as a community center for social gatherings, ceremonies, and other important meetings. Palauan villages are usually governed by a council of chiefs, representing each of the clans within the community. Chiefs are responsible for making decisions regarding land, resources, and village affairs. Number 24. Palauans are known for their kindness and hospitality toward foreigners, reflecting their cultural values and traditions. They have great respect for their elders and authority figures, both in the family and the community. Palauan society is characterized by close-knit communities and strong family bonds. Family and community gatherings are an essential part of people's lives, and it is common for extended families to live very close to one another or to share a house generation after generation. Number 25. Palau is among the 20 least visited countries in the world. And Despite this, its main revenues come from diving and snorkeling tourism. Other activities that the population engages in are agriculture, cultivating products like cassava, taro, bananas, and breadfruit, and fishing. Number 26. Before the arrival of Western missionaries, Palauans practiced their indigenous and traditional beliefs based on the worship of spirits, ancestors, and nature deities. In the 19th century, Catholic and Protestant missionaries converted the local population to Christianity. As Christianity took root, traditional religious practices declined. Today, the majority of the population in Palau are Catholic and Protestant Christians, with minorities of the indigenous Modekinge religion, Muslims, and Mormons. Number 27. Baseball was introduced to Palau during the Japanese occupation in 1920 and has since become the most popular sport. Their national team achieved the gold in the Micronesian Games in 1990, 1998, and 2010, as well as in the Pacific Games in 2007. Number 28. The cuisine of Palau is based on local products such as cassava, taro, yam, potato, fish, and pork which are used in many of its traditional dishes. It has been influenced by other cultures such as Japanese, American, and Filipino. Some of the most common recipes are Spam Musubi, Okoi, Tempura Fish, and Rosti Taro. Number 29. It is a country with very low altitude. The highest point in the Republic of Palau is Mount Ngur Kelkus on the island of Babo Daub with a height of 242 meters above sea level. Number 30. The Badrokau stone monoliths are the most important archaeological site in Palau. They are a group of 37 massive stones of volcanic origin that vary in size and shape. But some can measure up to 5 meters in length and weigh up to 5 tons. It is believed that these stones formed the base of a larger structure, possibly a communal house or a ceremonial meeting place. 
The origin of these stones is also a mystery. They are believed to have been transported from a distant location, possibly from a quarry on the island of Babo Daub, or even from another place outside of Palau. What is clear is that the logistics and skill required to move and place these massive stones showcase the construction and organization abilities of the ancient Palauans. Number 31. The Balao National Museum is the oldest in Micronesia, located in Kora, and has been operating since 1955. It focuses on objects and photos that show what the ancestral life of the Palauans was like. Number 32. The current flag of Palau has a recent design and, although simple, holds great significance. The golden disc represents the full moon, which for Palauans is a sign of good fortune and productivity in fishing. And the blue background symbolizes its independence. Number 33. Two or three months after Palauan women give birth to their first child, they participate in Ungasech, a ceremony in which for five days a healer provides the mother with warm cleansing baths, then dresses her in traditional clothing to finally present the baby to her husband's family. Number 34. Nine days after the death of a person, when the earth around the grave becomes compact, Palauans perform the Omengedes ceremony, placing stones on top of the grave. Number 35. In the past, both men and women in Palau used to dress only in a two-piece skirt, similar to the Hawaiian style. Nowadays, casual and practical style is usually worn to stay comfortable in the heat, with t-shirts, shorts, and sandals. Number 36. If you're going to Palau, there are some laws and other aspects you may want to know about. In January 2020, Palau became the first country in the world to ban the sale and use of sunscreens that contain chemicals harmful to coral reefs and marine life, such as oxybenzone or octinoxate. These chemicals have been shown to cause the bleaching of corals and harm to coral larvae and other marine species. However, Sunscreens made from compounds that do not harm corals can be used. Palau is a very safe country with very little crime, although it is advisable to employ common sense security measures such as not carrying too much cash on hand. The country's biggest attraction is its waters and marine life, so a lot of time is spent in the water. To avoid sunburn, it is advisable to use approved sunscreens or wear some clothing, like a long-sleeved shirt, if you're going to spend more than 30 minutes swimming or snorkeling. If you're going to be under the sun for several days, it will be cost-effective to buy neoprene pants and a long-sleeved shirt. There are saltwater crocodiles in some areas of the country, so if you are traveling on your own, keep this in mind. And if you're in a group, Ask guides before accessing places where you believe they might be found. Crocodiles usually stay in mangrove areas, and there are no warning signs for their presence. When diving, you are likely to see many sharks, although they are usually not dangerous. One risk to be aware of, although no cases have been reported, is the artifacts from World War II. There are some that remained undetonated in Peleliu and Angaur. If you go to Jellyfish Lake, it's important to be very careful with these creatures, not to kick them and not to take them out of the water. Public transportation in Palau is very limited, and getting around can be a challenge without a personal vehicle. Taxis are available, but there are few. To make the most of your time in Palau and explore better, renting a car is a more practical option. There are several rental agencies available, several of them at the international airport. Especially during the high tourism seasons, it is advisable to book in advance. Keep in mind that Palau drives on the right side of the road, which may be different from your home country. The state of Kara, where most of the tourist spots in Palau are located, has curfews that restrict people's movement. From Monday to Thursday, it is from 2.30 a.m. to 5 a.m., and from Friday to Sunday and holidays, from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Write in the comments your experience if you have visited Palau. And if you are Palauan, 
tell us more about your country. Leave me a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe with notifications on. See you soon!